Well, you know, it's going to be a good morning when even the dogs are excited, but we're just east of Chamberlain, South Dakota here, and there's snow on the ground. It's late season, and I just love this time of the year because these birds get so bunched up. It's incredible. And so just enough snow here where it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to get started. One of the best places in the whole world if you love to hunt pheasants. Straight line, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Booster. Nice shooting, man. Passion for the Hunt is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner Boats, Steerka, North Dakota Tourism, Federal Premium Ammunition, Matthews Archery, Travel Manitoba, and Primo's Hunting. Nice old long tail. Beautiful looking birds this time of the year. So this year on our late season pheasant hunt, we donated a trip to the California Deer Association. Now the reason that the CDA intrigues me so much is a lot of times, a lot of the legislation that you see that really attacks hunting lifestyles, a lot of it begins on the coast, whether it's the east coast or the west coast where there's fewer hunters. Rooster! The California Deer Association has done a tremendous job in California, not only recruiting hunters, but also doing a lot to improve the habitat for the black-tailed deer and the mule deer that live in California. At the California Deer Association auction, Dave Gearing, the president of our local chapter, uh, had told me about this opportunity that his friend Dave Osborne had donated uh, to come out here to South Dakota and hunt some pheasants, and it sounded like a great opportunity uh, to spend some time with some good guys out here in South Dakota. Ever since I was little, I kind of had a different relationship with my dad. He was paralyzed before, paralyzed and put in a wheelchair before I was born, and so I was always his helper. And while other kids were playing soccer with their dad, I was helping him with his construction company or helping him with his stuff. And then shooting and then hunting, we were able to do together, and it just brought us closer together. We're excited to be here in South Dakota. A little chilly, but uh, the weather's beautiful and lots of pretty dry snow, uh, having a great time. We knew going in that, uh, you know, having a hunter in a wheelchair would present some challenges pheasant hunting, and so we were trying to think of, you know, things that we could do, maybe where we could post them up on the end of some of these large fields and let the pheasants fly over them as they're flushing up. And uh, so we just had this desire to, to try to get Tyler in some great pheasant hunting, even though, you know, he couldn't walk. You know, we were able to get him in position. It was just great to watch. It was even greater to watch is to watch Tyler watch his son, you know, watch his son out in those fields, you know, shooting, you know, some of his first South Dakota pheasants. Oh, there comes one, there comes one. Oh, it's going down. Ah! He's chasing him down. <laughs> well, there we go, my first South Dakota pheasant. There you go, brother. That one couldn't have gone better. You're the, you're the best dog I know. Here we go, brother. I, I've been told that several times. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Nice shot. Nice shot. Beautiful oh, bird. Cool. Shooting in general and hunting is one of those things we've always been able to do with a little bit of ingenuity. Rooster! Tyler actually bid on the trip. It was a CDA auction in uh, Walnut Creek, California and his son McGregor is big into uh, trap shooting and they're from that area. Really excited to have them with us and uh, watch them 
shoot a few birds and really have the time of their life uh, here at uh, Wings of Thunder. It's just an awesome spot. Rooster! Good shooting! The reason these trips are important is, one, getting people who are in California who maybe not had the opportunity to hunt in other states, seeing how other states are organized as well as, you know, regulated, because in California we're probably one of the most restricted states when it comes to hunting, whether it be waterfowl, deer, what have you. And this type of a trip was a opportunity for some folks once in a lifetime. Here at Wings of Thunder, we're a pheasant hunting lodge. We have about 3,500 acres. We'll plant milo, sunflowers, corn, a lot of CRP. The nesting is really important for us. We do leave the food plots in all year for the birds so they have plenty of food when all the other crops are taken out around us after the season. Everything we do here is for the birds. One thing we're doing up here, I haven't done before with a group this size, is we're actually running two dogs and we've got Tyler Douglas down here as our blocker in the back and uh, running the dogs and we're working these fields. It's kind of fun because the dogs are working the whole cut right here and we're working in behind them. So we've got them in three different positions with the back line, side blocker and end blockers. I have the position is called the blocker. I'm walking out ahead. So rooster comes up, somebody misses it. I'm going to take the second or third shot at it and or keep it within the uh, cornrows. There goes a nice rooster right over there going across. Dogs are working hard. All right, come on. Coming around here, coming around, coming around. Stay up, stay up. That's it. <laughs> you know, a lot of times this time of year, you're hunting all day and you're hunting hard. And you know, that's what I love about this. I don't want to be over in an hour. I want to enjoy this all day long. So late season hunting, that's perfect. This particular field, it looks like it is standing corn. We have been hunting sorghum, but uh, you know, it's a little longer. I like hunting the corn that's a little bit higher than this, but it, it seems like it always holds a lot of birds, and we're very usually very successful in these kinds of fields here. So we're, we'll see if they hold the birds we're hoping uh, it's holding. Rooster! Funky! Yeah! Hold the line! It's just a real treat to have good dogs that work well together. And you can work a much bigger field than you normally would. Uh, but uh, we're having a great day. There's another one. Got lots of shots at lots of birds and it's been a, it's been fun talking to all the all the guys and the gentlemen here and it's been oh excited to see what the rest of the day holds. Rooster! Good shot! Watching these dogs, but that's probably the highlight of pheasant hunting for me. I just love the enthusiasm these dogs have. It just Adds so much fun to this hunt. I mean, I just love watching the dogs.
Good shot. You know, if you do a lot of late season pheasant hunting, you can almost anticipate these birds getting up wild. You can anticipate the shots being a little bit further. You know, these birds can be just tough to bring down, but you know, instead of that traditional ounce and a quarter round that a lot of upland hunters shoot, for late season hunting especially, Shields has an exclusive federal round that's an ounce and three eighths, just a little bit higher velocity. Ounce and three eighths, two and three quarter inch shell, and four and five shot can be just a deadly round when you're anticipating that 30 to 60 yard shot. So we're out here uh, blocking for the rest of the crew that's walking towards us through this big long field of Milo right now and just waiting to see if the birds will kick up this way and see if we can get an opportunity or two. Oh, I had tons of fun on day one. That was my first pheasant hunt and super excited to see what day two has to hold. Can. Rooster. Nice shot. Boy, those fiddles are nice. Drop. You know, here at Wings of Thunder, in the late season, the late part of the year, we hold a lot of birds because we're the only crop left. Everybody's harvest, all their corn, all their milo, all their sunflower fields, and we let everything stand all the way through March. And then in March, we'll still only take maybe a third out just to let the birds have all the feed they need until the next year. All right, guys, here we go. So what becomes more and more important each year in my eyes is getting involved with nonprofit groups that stand up for conservation, getting involved with recruitment of uh, new hunters. It doesn't have to be a child. It could be just anybody that's never hunted before and get those opportunities to people that uh, maybe hasn't had the chance or hasn't been exposed to it and uh, give those people those opportunities. Brewster, hit him again, Mac. Way to follow through and keep shooting. Good job with this win, nice lead on him. Harry, here. Fetch, drop, good boy. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, he's on him. Nice shot. I feel the best feed for the birds are milo and corn. It just seems to, the milo will stand good for us and the birds just love the milo. Corn also is good for us, especially early in the season uh, before we get the weather. Corn, especially in the early season before we get the snow, seems to be better. But as the year goes by, the Milo's better. Good. Drop. Drop. All right, guys, we're getting close to the end. Let's make sure our shots are high. We'll usually line up to do a cut. We'll have a walker blocker on each side to help contain the birds. And the hunters really need to watch and be aware of where the walker blockers are. They're, they're supposed to be up there at 150 yards, but we still gotta be aware where they're at for the safety of our walker blockers. And when we get towards the end of the field, we'll always say shots up. We got blockers at the end. We just need to be safe. Come on, Harry. Good boy. I think it's pretty clear from the numbers that we hear about from the different uh, fish and game organizations at the state level that the hunting numbers are down. 
and the people in certainly in our area that we talk to aren't familiar with what it means to be a hunter. They maybe have an incorrect view of what a hunter is. And there's so much more that goes on from the harvesting of the animals, uh, it's the camaraderie of the groups uh, and the connection with different people. Um, and the, uh, it's been a perfect opportunity for my son and I gotten to see firsthand how the heritage of hunting and outdoorsmanship can be passed down through the generations, whether it starts new at my level and continues down, or the other guys that I talk to that, have, that are hunting because they did, their father did, their grandfathers did before them, those kind of things. All right, here we go, guys, line's moving. Oh, there he goes. Yep. Get that one. Here. Oh. Ah, you got him. Good job, Dave. This was an amazing field. Yeah, that was My awesome. My goodness, there were a lot of birds. Yeah, you did a good job on the walker blocker, and you got a couple of those good ones that were slipped slip by me and towards the end, and it was good. Absolutely outstanding. I enjoyed this a great deal. Here we go, fellas, here we go. Get ready. Be ready here, fellas, be ready. They're coming up now. Hey, hey, hey. Right there, Dave. There we go. Really felt the expectation was the winner of this trip in the live auction to have seriously one of the greatest pheasant hunts of all time and that was truly the expectation it really showed the quality of the types of hunting that happens in the midwest of the u.s rooster steve nice you know all coming back at the end of the drive or at the end of the day and you know reminiscing over the hunt and uh you know, just watching that, you know, that uh, affection and bond between father and son. And, uh, you know, I could just tell that uh, Tyler was so proud of McGregor. And that, to me, was probably the highlight of the hunt. Coming to a place like Wings of Thunder with good friends and enjoying three or four days together is second to none. And I think families should do more of this. I think also people who have never hunted before could come to a place like this and just say, wow, what a great experience because it's more about the true, the habitat, the nature, the experience and that. And I encourage everybody to do more of this. You hear about South Dakota pheasant hunting, and it creates a vision in your mind. And whatever that is, if you haven't seen it firsthand, and you haven't seen it at a professional lodge like Wings of Thunder that farms and works uh, the fields basically just to be uh, a lodge, a place where people and hunters can come, uh, it's really mind-blowing when you see the volume of wild birds that are within shooting range and just flying throughout the air, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so it's really amazing experience to get an opportunity to come here to South Dakota and see 
pheasant hunting the way it was really created to be, um, the way that uh, it's, it's set up here is really close to perfect as I could imagine. You know, it's, it far exceeds whatever, what my mind thought it was gonna be for sure. Right there, Dave. Nice shot, Dave. Just like today, having Tyler and Mac, father and son out here today, there's nothing, nothing better than Mac wants to shoot a bird and have dad see it, but really it's more important for dad to see his son shooting that bird with him. Um, they're from California, they do quite a bit of hunting, but the first thing Mac said is, wow, I thought we had birds in California, Dad, and I cannot believe the amount of birds we've seen. And he's like, I know, son, that's why we're here. And uh, it was neat to see Tyler today. Um, he was on that mule being handicapped, never complained, it was a cold day with the wind and both of them were just tickled pink.